Song of the South is... I'm going to be watching you... Duh, what the fuck? At least let me get a whole sentence out first! Anyway, I got a good feeling about this musical March in September episode, as we're going to be watching the classic 1946 Walt Disney blend of live action and animation Song of the South. A movie so popular, it even spawned one of the most beloved rides at Disney theme parks. Oh boy, oh boy, such a treat. I rarely get to see the Walt Disney vault on this show. Uh, howdy, Barry. Who that call my name? Oh, uh, 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 hello, Uncle Remus. Appears to me that you's in a powerful bad mood to go to the party. <laughs> all right, all right. Let's address the racist elephant in the room. Song of the South came out of Walt Disney's desire to make a film adaptation out of Joel Chandler Harris's stories of Uncle Remus and Br'er Rabbit. The intention of the film, and the stories, was to give a simple view into the lives of African Americans during the Reconstruction period, not to mention supposedly showing a victory over slavery and fascism, with the movie's story being set directly after the Civil War, and the film's release being after World War II. Bear Rabbit, wait for the tar baby to say, fine, how are you? But the tall baby, he don't say nothing, and Bear Fox, he lay low. But this is still 1946 we're talking about here. So what we're given is a very glorified look at plantation life in the late 1800s, and a super idyllic look at a master-slave type relationship. Oh yeah, and stereotypes. Lots and lots of stereotypes. But on the plus side, I don't think the line go 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 ghosts is anywhere in the movie. The film was Disney's first venture into part live-action territory, with the animation bits being directed by Wilfred Jackson, who would later helm Lady and the Tramp, Peter Pan, among other things. Plus, the live-action bits were directed by Harv Foster, who would later direct the fabulous Joe! Spoiler, he was only kind of fabulous. The film has had an interesting release history, and I don't know, something tells me I may be looking at a sneak peek of a theoretical US DVD release. Oh, damn, I gotta hand it to him. This is Illumination's best work to date. Song of the South is about a kid named Johnny who needs the help of some old-timey stories from Uncle Remus to help Johnny adapt to life on a plantation. It's just gonna be Uncle Remus saying to the kid, You live in a mansion and I live in a pile of sticks. Fuck off! This is all foreshadowing as Uncle Remus tells the kids about a tree that will fucking eat you and a fox who jerks off while watching it happen. Holy shit, it's Eddie Murphy! Where is he? Maybe he is a g g g g ghost And just cause DJ Tales is about critters like Bear Rabbit and Bear Fox, that don't mean they ain't the same like can happen to folks. What the hell? They took out Uncle Remus and replaced him with an empty chair! You're making it worse, Disney! Johnny is under the impression he's vacationing on a plantation, while Hattie McDaniel is just glad she doesn't have to make a curtain dress for that bitch Scarlett O'Hara. Why don't you come to see us like she did last spring? Because it... I thought you'd enjoy seeing the plantation. Is Grandma mad at us? Well, of course not, Johnny. That kid is two lines away from demanding a golden ticket from a Wonka bar. Sad thing is, this is 1946, so this character is supposed to be a Mongolian. You ain't never heard no frogs like them in Atlanta. You know what they're saying? Nitty, 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 nitty. <laughs> <laughs> Man, fuck these honkies. I'm gonna piss in their lemonade. And now they've arrived, on set for the prequel to The Jerk. Wait, no, this is the prequel to Dead Silence. 
while Mary Shaw talks about the next kid she's gonna turn into a dummy. Could you look any more shocked to see black people? I love noisy children. It makes it so much easier to tell where they are and what they're up to. That kid would look less shocked upon seeing a flying saucer. It was a simpler time when you can be fascinated by a clock. Hence why young fat grandma is always way too early for things. Dad decides to leave mom and son at the plantation because he's thinking of running for Congress in the future and this movie might come back to haunt him. <laughs> There's a face that says, well, I now know what mouth rape is. No, Dad, don't go. He's in the middle of playing a game called Crying or Sneezing. Johnny sneaks out in the middle of the night, and by middle of the night, I mean 11 o'clock in the morning, but he does happen upon some sweet-ass tunes. We are family. Again, these re-release changes are very obvious. This is why you don't venture away from the plantation. You're either going to find Leatherface or long stories. And with that, he grabbed Brill Rabbit for the tail and made for the dash him again the ground. But just then, Brill Rabbit's tail snapped off real short. And then a fog of ghost pirates came through and killed every single one of them. This reminds me, I ever tell you kids about Damien the White Devil? They're all looking for Johnny, but I guess it has been peaceful without him. So you go ahead and look after him, Uncle Remus. I feel so bad for Johnny. Appears to me like you was figuring on going someplace. I am, and nobody's gonna stop me. No, no, please, continue telling the former slave why you're so sad. Johnny wants to run away to Atlanta, and then Uncle Remus lets him, and the kid gets eaten by wolves. The end. All right, all right, no one gets eaten. I was laughing because they're exactly the words that old Br'er Rabbit used the time that he lit out from his briar patch. Uh, yeah, maybe I made the mistake of coming here. Leave the poor old man alone. He just spent the last several days driving around Miss Daisy. That'd make anyone see cartoon rabbits. Johnny demands Uncle Remus tell him the tale of Br'er Rabbit. Call this Br'er Rabbit. He is the outdoorless, the most bodacious critter in the whole world. He also eats spoiled little white boys that pester old men who just want to keep to themselves. Look at how this is lit. This does feel like a story that's going to end with Br'er Rabbit skinning alive plantation children. This sets up for the part that, well, I guess most people have seen, regardless if they've seen the entire film. It happened on one of them zippity doo da days. Now that's the kind of day when you can't open your mouth without a song jump right out of it. Zippity doo da. They got rid of zippity doo da days when it became the highest suicide day of the year. Zippity doo da, zippity a. Wonderful feeling, wonderful day. Oh man, Reconstruction was awesome! It's good to see how Toontown thrived in the years after the cartoon Civil War. And then he ate them. You got a better way to get Honey Nut Cheerios in 1870? On the plus side, I'm glad the crow from Dumbo got his wish of becoming a real boy. But there's something familiar about this rabbit. Ow! Ow! Now see that? That old brow patch ain't brought me nothing but trouble. Ow! That's not Br'er Rabbit. That's one of Bugs Bunny's disguises to fool Yosemite Sam. The sun shines bright in my old Kentucky home. Bugs, Bugs, there's plenty of carrots up north. Why are you doing this? And then Br'er is off to Candyland. Even though this is animated, I got a bad feeling here. Zip. Questionable imagery! And that's crazy old Br'er Fox up to his usual shenanigans of lynching animals. So there's Br'er Rabbit, Br'er Fox, and Br'er Bear. Hey, you really knocked yourself out on those names, huh? I did. 
dee doo does it. Ah, oh, good. He just got done clubbing Brayer Seal. I guess he's free for the rest of the day. There's only one way out of this mess. Take my place so that the fox will chop you up into a hundred bits. And there's something about the redness in his eyes. Hey! I... Uh, I was making a dollar a minute! Yep, high as fuck. But what is this story of black animal on black animal crime supposed to prove? And that's why you shouldn't run away to Atlanta, Johnny, or a fox will axe you to death. I don't know, this story seems a little dated. What's story time like in the next cabin over? I would like to hear about some white anti stepping dwarfs, man. Good lord! Please, somebody invent goosebumps! And everyone is still looking for Johnny. Uncle Weavers, I can't find Johnny no place. And I suppose to take care of him. Well, what do you know about that? For the love of God, Uncle Remus, tell him where the kid is. You're gonna get the both of you killed. While the mom is too busy asking if her dress makes her ass look racist, Johnny comes back home. Here, take your damn kid and stop dressing him like Paula Poundstone as a ventriloquist dummy. Let's run along upstairs and get ready for bed. Miss Doshin, John forgot's bundle. Why does every scene end like someone's gonna get shot? Where's Fred Williamson when you need him? And then Johnny proceeded to have nightmares about axe-wielding foxes and lynching rabbits. <laughs> oh, Johnny, gotta start with them hate crimes early! Stop making fun of old-timey racism, snob. As a white person, it offends me very deeply when you make fun of old-timey racism. Old-timey racism is above jokes. Aw, you so sensitive. Johnny has a specialty of laughing at those embarrassing themselves and not with them. On the plus side, Toby won his Little Rascals audition, and of course his name is Toby! I don't know, maybe this makes the black characters look superior. At least Toby isn't in the Darby O'Gill and the Little People line of clothing. Who said this movie doesn't have a race war in it? Though something puts a stop to it. You can't cut across there. Why not? That's why. <laughs> Ain't that some bullshit. And why does this movie need bullies? Look at the little girlie wearing a lace collar, wearing a lace collar. It was at this point Johnny decided to never again be the physical embodiment of a racist table setting. I think that's what the music is telling me. <laughs> the fuck down soundtrack. I'm fairly certain he's not gonna find the nearest cliff to jump off of. Johnny and the poor girl Ginny have themselves a trade. She gives him a puppy and he gives her that thing he ate a bowl of shredded weed on top of. Ah, young love. Hmm, haven't heard that song yet. Pretty happy tune for two kids who are about to find an old witch who lives in a house of candy. However, Johnny can't keep the dog, but I bet he knows one person he could take it to. Old Br'er Possum got a trick. How come he gets so fat? There is a catch, though. He's gonna rename him Br'er Dog. <laughs> got a nice little tail, too. And Br'er Dog was never seen again after Stew Saturday. Such a pretty sky, I'll bet it's supposed to be two in the morning. In that case, quiet down with the singing. Stick your finger in the dumpling, get your trouble with the cook, let the rain pour down. I'm glad we finally got a story about the people who actually built the Wicker Man. And I think that bully on the right is Will Poulter making this a prequel to Detroit. He looks amazing for being in his 80s. Alright, enough dawdling. When the hell is Django gonna show up? Don't you pay no attention to them. If they make trouble, 
You just tell my mom. And when are they gonna help Santa conquer the Martians? And then Uncle Remus and Toby chastise Johnny for looking like a sailor in a gay porno. Here you go, Johnny. It's another story called Br'er Rabbit Thinks Johnny Dresses Like a Jackass. Good morning. Good morning, girls. <laughs> hoo hoo, those butterflies got jungle fever! This is the part where Br'er Rabbit gets Uncle Remus to help him win a basketball game. And when he says the losers get turned into slaves, he fucking means it! I'm starting to get the feeling that the other animals don't care for Br'er Rabbit. Is the moral of the story, don't be an asshole? It took that frog hours to catch that! Why not, Bro Rabbit? Better mend your ways. You's heading for trouble one of these days. Yes, thanks, Darth Vader frog. Somewhere, there's a bored housewife who thinks the most offensive thing about this movie is that the frog is smoking. And that's included in a cartoon in which cokehead Br'er Fox is creating a literal tar baby in order to catch Br'er Rabbit. That's right, Br'er Rabbit and the Tar Baby. What's so offensive about that? Are you saying puddles of tar can't have babies together? So much for all-inclusiveness. Shut up, Walt. Oh, well, maybe you'll like this Coca-Cola ad better. When they found that delicious drink, they laughed at the sun. Um, and then the events of the gods must be crazy happened? This is like watching Winnie the Pooh if Christopher Robin was a character in Roots. Just as sassy as a jaybird, till by and by, he spied that tall baby. Then he sing out, how do you do? The fuck did that narrator just say to me? No, Br'er Rabbit, don't fall for this! If you don't say how the time I count three, I might bust you wide open! Yeah, well, I guess it could be worse. But watch out for that bad old tiger! That old tiger sure do like dark meat! It's not that Br'er Tiger prefers the taste of dark meat over white meat, it's just that he's a really racist tiger. Boy, there really was nothing to do before the invention of television, was there? And that's why you should never take Dolomite's clothes and then shrink them in the laundry. <laughs> but wait, there's plenty more! This old Brer Fox was fixed to barbecue him for dinner. Right then and there. Yes sir, yes sir, just in a minute now. Won't be long now. Dinner gonna be ready in a minute now. Yeah. Don't eat that tar, you'll die! The lesson here is reverse psychology as Brer Rabbit uses this method to escape. Look, all I'm saying is that my cartoons could do that without racial stereotypes. <laughs> Alright, well, maybe not that one time. While Br'er Rabbit fakes his own death, Br'er Dude and Br'er Walter pay their respects to Br'er Rabbit, who loved bowling and hopping on lots of fences, which for some reason causes Br'er Fox's acid to kick in. Well, I sure hope you're happy. The kids are off to accidentally drown themselves in some tar, unless the bullies can get to them first. The bullies want the puppy back, and with a little reverse psychology, the bullies get in trouble, and Johnny jumps into a thorn bush and dies. And peace was had at the plantation. Sooner or later you're gonna be hanging around. Sounds like someone got an advanced copy of the Dick Tracy soundtrack. It is cool seeing this 1946 scene featuring these two Oscar winners, as Hattie McDaniel won Best Supporting Actress for Gone with the Wind, and James Baskett won an honorary Oscar for this, his last film. Even if it is in a film that contains a tar baby! Love it, Miss Sally. Johnny didn't mean no harm. He just trying to be like Brer Rabbit. I told him a tale about the tar baby. Oh, well, I guess that's it. Wait, you told them about what?! Mom asks Uncle Remus not to tell Johnny any more stories. In other words, she wants him to put his stories in the Disney vault and pretend they never happened. When Johnny goes to find the dog, there's something about Bobby Driscoll's look and delivery that sounds like he's the child incarnation of a bad angel on Uncle Remus's shoulder. Gone. Then we gotta find him. Something might happen to him. If he runs around loose. 
must get Uncle Remus killed. I ain't gonna be telling you no more stories. Again, stop making the former slave feel sorry for you! <laughs> Meanwhile, at Joan Crawford's birthday party for Christina, Johnny wears his finest used tampon to pick Ginny up for the party. Don't pay no attention to these bullies. Ralph Parker is going to show up and beat the hell out of them. Even after being pushed into the mud, she's still wearing clothes more dignified than Johnny. No, what are you doing? You're gonna get the shoeless hillbilly's clothes all dirty. Give me that stick! You're about to know what a popsicle feels like, motherfucker! I guess story time could help Ginny out as well. I know what! I'll tell you a story about Br'er Rabbit! Ginny has no time for your appropriation of Br'er Rabbit! All right, scooch over. If you're gonna tell the story, then tell it right. <laughs> Johnny does look like an asshole. Ugh, I'm tired of this Br'er Rabbit and Br'er Fox shtick. Can we watch some other forgotten Disney cartoon? <laughs> Fine, back to Br'er Rabbit! Br'er Rabbit has another predicament to get out of, so he tells Br'er Fox about his laughing place. I just been to my laughing place, and every time I start thinking about my laughing place, I kill ah! What's a... Yeah, Br'er Rabbit? What's a laughing place? It's a nitrous oxide bar! Not enough stories tell us about lynching from the point of view of cartoon rabbits. Christ, even watching this movie, I feel like my cat is judging me. Look, Lloyd, I know that you're upset, but at least I didn't go with FaceApp's suggestion that I review Cloud Atlas. Can't wait to see how Br'er Rabbit gets himself out of this one! Hey, there ain't nothing in here except me. <laughs> see? So many lynchings would have been averted if people just led the clan to a bush full of bees. and Br'er Bear had severe bee allergies. They're fucking dead! Another lesson learned. The party's all over, dear. And you weren't even there to tell your guests goodbye. Well, you... Uncle Remus told us a story about Br'er Rabbit. God damn it, what I tell you little shits about getting my ass shot? I see this ending well. I don't like to say this, Uncle Remus. But from now on, I want you to stay away from Johnny. You understand? completely away. That's the most peaceful resolution to an 1800s racial quarrel that I've ever seen. Complete with jolly music! Well, we're moving on now. Moving on. Again, I don't think that's really part of the soundtrack. And then Uncle Remus is off for fear he can't cheat death for a hundredth time. It's then that Johnny truly misses his father. Plus, he has only moments left before he turns into a talking candlestick. Now to tell Uncle Remus that he found his own laughing place. It's a hilarious cartoon he saw called Scrumby Mama with a Boogie Beat. No, Uncle Remus, don't go. I could get you in loads more trouble. Uncle Remus, come back! And then Johnny learned the most important lesson yet. Don't mess with the bull or you'll get the horns. And by that, I mean he was run over by a fucking bull. My job here is done. I'm off to fight Bugs Bunny and to act in a terrible Bo Derek movie. The black people are all praying for Johnny's speedy recovery. Without Johnny, who else is going to walk around dressed like a nutcracker? Come back, Uncle Remus. Come back. Damn it, why couldn't he have been dreaming about Shane coming back? At least then we could release that dream on DVD. Only you can save him, Uncle Remus! And that night, he was the happiest Br'er Rabbit. 
And that was the laughingest place in the whole wide world. Yes, that's nice and all, but how is the story of Br'er Rabbit and the jar of burnt cork and a thing of lipstick supposed to bring Johnny back to life? Guess it worked. Don't know why. God, this movie's slow. Are they gonna find the Boggy Creek monster or what? But behold the twist ending. Another Br'er Rabbit. Hi, Br'er Rabbit. Yes, sir. This here's one of them zippity doo dah days for sure. And thus Uncle Remus made millions as a salvia dealer during the turn of the century. Truly the best version of ebony and ivory. So long as a fox doesn't chase you with an axe. Oh, what a wonderful day. the story of how Walt Disney ended racism in America. I don't understand what's so wrong with this. Uncle Remus is portrayed as being happy, and when you're portrayed as being happy and jolly, there can be nothing offensive about your material. <laughs> Weren't you just in jail for jerking off during the Emoji Movie? So, of course, Song of the South has had somewhat of a controversial release through time. While it's never gotten an official home video release in the States, the movie got a theatrical re-release in 1956, plus in 1972, then in 1973 on a double bill with the Aristocats, Shanghai, Hong Kong, and Fu Young. <laughs> Seems legit. Plus again in 1980, and in 1986 to coincide with the release of Splash Mountain. Animated portions of the film have been featured on VHS and DVD, including a special feature on the Alice in Wonderland DVD, and the full-length movie has been released on home video in Europe and in Asia. And yes, it is very, very easy to find a copy of this movie that'll play on any DVD player. You could easily release this and pack it with a shitload of featurettes about its historical connotations and its place in Disney and film history, because withholding it from release is just going to make people want to seek it out even more just for curiosity's sake. Not to mention, Warner Brothers has included some of their more controversial cartoons on DVD. Plus, there are plenty of wartime cartoons out there with an official release. And if I can go to Best Buy and see this sitting on the shelf, Song of the South also deserves its spot under the microscope. At least then I'll know some context for when I'm sliding down a mountain on a log hurtling towards a pool of water. <laughs> I know what silly face I'm gonna make on the drop-down camera while I'm thinking about old-timey racism. I'm a stubborn old woman, Uncle Remus. Yes, Miss Doshi, I know it's that. Want to see more Cinema Snob episodes? Do you like movie reviews from people in cars? How about animated cat detectives? Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash stonedgremlinproductions. Follow us on Twitter at The Cinema Snob or check out our homepage at thecinemasnob.com. And you guessed correctly, I am a little drunk.